What do you want? You want exposure. You want people to understand who you are, what you're about, and how you can take good care of them. But again, if like people don't see your content, then the tree fell in the forest and it never made a sound. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. My name is Jason Pantana. I'm a business coach and national speaker with Tom Ferry. And today I get to be the host of the Tom Ferry Show and I have a super important topic for us to cover today. It is how do I optimize every single one of my social media posts on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, no matter what platform I'm on, how do I optimize it? Why? So that people actually see the content. Because here's the challenge that so many agents and business owners are facing right now in today's marketplace. It's they're putting all this time and energy and effort into building great social media content. Uh, the kinds of videos and posts that people want to see, it adds value. They engage with it, but the problem is, most followers on Facebook, on Instagram, it doesn't matter the platform, most followers, if you rely just upon the algorithm, if you just post it and hope for the best, won't see the content. And it's kind of like the old saying, like if a tree fell in the forest and nobody was around, did it make a sound? The same is true here. Like if you post on social, it might be amazing, but if nobody sees it, if nobody engages, did it make a sound? And the answer is no. There's literally no impact that happens without optimizing your post. So here's the game plan. We are gonna go through 20 tweaks, 20 ideas, 20 tactics that you can start putting in place now to optimize every single post on your social platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, you name it, on YouTube. How can I optimize it for maximum content mileage? End of day, like I'm putting a lot of effort into it. I better get results from it. I wanna see, I wanna see reach, I wanna see impact. How do I maximize that mileage? Let's go into a list of 20 things. Number one on the list is hashtags. Not a shock, but hashtags. We've talked about it before. Tom's talked about it an awful lot. Uh, hashtags, where are they most effective? First and foremost, on Instagram, on Twitter, they're very useful. I'm gonna focus in on Instagram in this particular application. Uh, hashtags on Facebook are not a known way to search, not really common. On YouTube, you can actually use hashtags. You can, almost like tags, you can make hashtags for YouTube videos. But again, it's not really a way people are searching right now on YouTube. There are other ways of tagging it and also on YouTube, hashtags actually provide people with an outlet. They could be watching your video, they could click the hashtag and then stop watching your video, which would do more harm than good. But on Instagram, they work. They work a whole lot. In fact, if you have an Instagram business profile or a creator profile, either way, just not the regular old profile, and if it's public, when you post your hashtags on every single post, it'll actually show you how many accounts were reached based upon your hashtags. And what I'm seeing, what we're seeing in our ecosystem with our clients, I think of awesome clients like Krista and Aaron Farr, who have an unbelievable presence on social media. Literally, in some posts, more than half of the people who are viewing those posts weren't following them. So it begs the question, how did they find the content? And the answer is hashtags. Now, Instagram allows you individually to add up to 30 hashtags. You can put them in the caption, you can put them in a comment. Quite frankly, you can actually do more, it's 30 per comment. So you can actually have other people comment and leave their own hashtags, but let's just make it simple. Let's call it 30 hashtags. You get 30, but you need to use them wisely, and I'll give you some tips on how to use them. First and foremost, you need to have basically a system for how do I do my hashtags. We recommend that you have six different buckets, or I guess like categories of hashtags to incorporate. Now, you don't have to use all 30 hashtags. It's not a rule. You can use all 30 hashtags. There's a lot of opinions that say, is it too many hashtags if I use all 30 hashtags? And the answer is, why would it be too many if Instagram allows you to use them? Now. You should not copy and paste your hashtags. Instagram wants you to select them manually. If you keep using the same hashtags exactly in the exact same order every single post, Instagram may flag that too because they're gonna look at it as a spamming type of behavior. But ultimately, I'm gonna give you six buckets and I want you to use these to get the ideas flowing, the juices flowing in terms of what hashtags work. First bucket is trending hashtags. Maybe include, if we have 30 total, so maybe include maybe five or six that are trending. Now. If they are completely unrelated to your post, Instagram may very well look at that as spam content. So make sure it's related to your post. The second category is locational. Again, if you're selling houses, you're doing so in a specific market. Like for example, I live in Nashville. One of the neighborhoods in Nashville, it's a hot neighborhood, it's called 12 South Nashville. It has its own hashtags, 12 South Nash, 12 South Nashville. Both are popular location-based hashtags Going back to Kristen Aaron Farr, if you want to get found locally, which 
you do, that's the whole premise of using social media to get business, then you need to use location-based hashtags, ones that are local to where you do business. Uh, category number three is descriptive hashtags. These could be hashtags you invented, frankly, or they could be hashtags that are already popular inside of Instagram. It kind of tells you when you're choosing a hashtag how many other posts use this hashtag. That's not really a relevant point right now, but descriptive means these hashtags are the most descriptive of what my post is about. Next one is interest-based hashtags. Interest-based simply means what would people be interested in? They might be interested in HGTV or shopping for homes, like home shopping, first time home buyer. What are their interests associated with your post? And then the last category is intent-based. What are they in market to do? It could be home shopping, might be a hashtag, or buying a home, or selling a home. Those could be intent-based hashtags. But if you use those six buckets, you kind of spread across the love of hashtags to be found by the widest possible audience. End of story. What do you want? You want exposure. You want people to understand who you are, what you're about, and how you can take good care of them. But again, if like people don't see your content, then the tree fell in the forest and it never made a sound. So hashtags, that is tweak number one. Let's move on to tweak number two, which is video. Anything that can be video will be video. Mark my words, you could look on Instagram, you could look on Twitter, you could look on YouTube, you can look on Facebook, you can look on any social platform, doesn't matter. Whether it's a post, a story, an upload, and you will find stats that support the idea that videos work. Video everything, right? So the whole saying is anything that can be video will be video. I want you to look right now at what you're posting. Is it a picture? Is it something that doesn't have your face in it? Is this something that could be a video and should be a video? Every stat supports that you should be doing more video. Everything practically should be video. So do more video. Tweak number three, subtitles. Get this, 85% uh, of posts on social media are watched with the sound off. 85% of videos. That means every video you do post, mark my words, 85% of people don't hear a word you're saying. Now, caveat is this. If you're running story ads on Instagram, actually those receive 60% of sound on, which is an anomaly. But for all intents and purposes, when you're posting video on social, most people are scrolling through their feed and the sound is off. So what should you do? You need subtitles so they can see what awesome things you're talking about and they can turn the sound on. Click it open, watch it, increase the watch time. It's a win-win. Where do you get subtitles? Uh, you can do it the free way which is when you post the video on Facebook, if you click edit the video, they actually have auto-generated subtitles in any, any, any language you want. You can pick the language, you can even go in and edit them in case they like mishear an embarrassing word and it's the wrong subtitles, go in and tweak that, make sure it's solid. YouTube has the same technology. You can go in, it does an auto-generated transcription of what it thinks you said, and you can go in and tweak it and make sure it's right. Uh, if you ask me the best way to do it, I'd probably hire a company like Rev.com, R-E-V.com. They charge about a buck 25 per recorded minute and they'll turn it around in like an hour, give you the full transcription. It's called an SRT file. You can upload it and you're done. Subtitles are attached to the video and people actually turn it on and watch the videos so people hear what you have to say and therefore remember you better. Next tip, thumbnails. Uh, thumbnails or they're sometimes called cover images. So for example, on Instagram, IGTV, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, thumbnails are that little picture you see before you actually watch the video. So for example, if you go to Tom Ferry's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Tom Ferry, uh, you're gonna see that every video has a thumbnail. It's typically a picture of Tom, there's some graphic overlays, uh, there's also like large text, large enough on the thumbnail that I could read it if I'm on my mobile phone. Because remember, most people who are on social, who are watching your videos, are doing so on mobile, not on laptops or desktops. So make sure like the thumbnail text is big enough. But again, if you wanna get people to watch your videos, to actually take advantage of your content, to get mileage out of that content, you need thumbnails. Now, what's convenient about IGTV and YouTube and Facebook is, and, and I'll give you the example on Facebook. All you have to do is after the video's posted, just go back, find that video on your Facebook page, click edit the video, and you can add the thumbnail after the fact. It's super easy to optimize the post by adding a thumbnail image, and it's a must. In 2020, it's a must, because right now, here's the deal. More and more, every single day, people are jumping on these different social platforms. More eyeballs, more attention, but also there's more competition, which means every post doesn't go as far as it used to. Now, does that mean I have to pay to play? We'll talk about that, we will, but if you're taking all the time to create amazing videos, 
amazing posts, but you're not taking the time after the fact to make sure they're optimized so that the most possible people see that content, you're missing the mark and you need to do so. Thumbnails. Next one up is alt text, or the full word here is alternative text. Uh, let me give you the like, TMI version of what is alt text. Alt text is actually part of HTML coding where when web developers were making websites, uh, they would put this thing called alternate text or alt attribute. And it was basically a description of this is a video of a fluffy cloud or whatever it is. It would describe what it was. Now, alt text became more useful in the sense of uh, it's really about visually and like visual impairment, uh, finding out what something's about when you can't necessarily see it, but there's also a lot of SEO benefit. Now, SEO, if that's a new word to you, it stands for search engine optimization. So for example, if my content on Instagram, if my account is public facing, that means I can be found on Google. Same with Facebook, right? So all my content, all my post is another way, even through Google and Bing, for people to find me. So imagine this, and by the way, Facebook and Instagram make this easy to do. All you have to do is click on your, your post, on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever it is. There's an option that says alt text where you can type out whatever you want it to say. I want you to think about that as if you're doing it straight for SEO. What, when people search on Google, on Bing, do you want them to find your posts, like what topics? So for me personally, my alt text is typically Jason Pantana, comma, Tom Ferry, business coach and national speaker, host of the popular seminar, Marketing Edge. That is the alt text on almost everything I post. Why? So that when people search for keynote speaker, Tom Ferry, Jason Pantana, whatever it is, Marketing Edge, my name, my content can start to pop up in their search results. How many of you have ever done a Google search where there are image results almost toward the top of the page? These alt text captions are part of what helps Google know what to place in those sections. So alt text, it's a tweak, it's easy to do. You can do it when you post, you can do it after you post, go back and edit. And I'll add this too. I know I'm kind of rolling through a list really quickly here. My hope is you can pause, take action, go back, do it again. I mean, I'm literally just rolling through a list. But anything I've talked about so far, with the exception of doing more video, anything else can be done either when you're doing the post or even after the post is done, going back and editing it after the fact. All right, let's keep rolling. My next one here on the list, number six, is trailers and cover images. So let's break up different platforms. Let's talk about YouTube, for instance. Have you ever gone to a YouTube channel, which is to say somebody's YouTube page? Uh, for example, Tom Ferry's YouTube channel. And at the very tippy top, there's a video that auto plays as soon as you get to that home section of the YouTube channel. That's called the channel trailer. You need one. Have you ever gone to somebody's Facebook page? And when you go to the Facebook page, there's the cover image, like typically on a Facebook page, or not typically, all the time on a Facebook page, there's a profile image, it's the circular shape image, and then there's that banner image that spans from left to right across the top header section. That's called a cover image and it can be a video. And what I recommend is the same video that is your channel trailer on YouTube is also the video that you put as your cover image video on your Facebook page. It can also, believe it or not, be done on LinkedIn. Just any place that allows for this, you should do it. But this should be a, a why you, a brand promise, your commercial that talks about, here's the way we do things, here's what makes us different from everybody else, here's who we care about, here's who we're for, we wanna work with you, we're looking for, to attract people who are like us, who vibe with us, who get what we're doing. This is another way to make an impression. You need to optimize your pages, you need to optimize your YouTube channel. I say it again, you're gonna put a lot of effort every day into consistent posting on social media. It would be a crying shame if you didn't take those last steps to lean into that last 10% and make sure you've optimized the page, optimized the profile, optimized the post so people actually see it. It's marketing. And marketing is silent without it being seen, without people engaging and interacting. All right, let's keep rolling. Next one on the list, we are at number seven, is playlists. Playlists. YouTube, Facebook, same difference, playlist. In fact, you can even kind of do playlists on IGTV. They're not really playlists, but you can be organized. I think another way to look at playlist is, I'm gonna create a lot of videos across my social media. Why? Because we know that video is the most effective format for any type of post, but so that people can be organized. I wanna talk about YouTube first, and then we'll talk about Facebook when it comes to playlists. When you go to Tom Ferry's YouTube channel, you're gonna find a lot of playlists. There are two schools of thought in terms of how to do playlists. The first school of thought is, it's just an organizational structure. 
So one playlist is market updates. Another playlist is listings. Another playlist is just some other descriptive category that says these videos are all the same thing. These are dogs, these are cats, these are ferrets, whatever. And you organize it like that. Family, phylum, genus, whatever. I can't remember what it is. That was a long time ago. Uh, the other school of thought is you do it, and I'm talking YouTube, you do it in a way that's designed to get people to watch more than one video at a time. Now, I can tell you this is the smarter way to do it. Uh, in other words, like you might have a tips for first time home buyers playlist. You might have a tips for selling your home in San Antonio. You might have those tips for investing in Airbnbs. Videos that all congregate around some central idea. Now, here's why that matters. Because on YouTube, the number one metric that YouTube is looking for in terms of, hey, this is good content, it's not good content. If it's good content, I'm gonna show it to more people. I'm gonna make sure people find this content. The number one metric is watch time. How long are people spending watching your videos? Now, why does YouTube care? They care because they make money off of ad monetization. So when videos get a lot of viewers, they can put ads in front of those videos and therefore the, the channel who's got the videos they make some money too, but that's where, that's where YouTube makes their money. So they know that they need people to watch your videos. The longer they watch, the more valuable you become to YouTube. Therefore, I want to promote watch time. And playlists are a super powerful way to do that. Now let's slip over to Facebook for a moment. On Facebook, playlists, it doesn't, they don't have the same metrics in the sense of watch time. They do, but less direct. It does matter, but with, with Facebook, and I'm going to get technical for a second, Facebook is a social network. If we're being technical, YouTube is really a search network. There's a difference between search and social. Search is I go looking and I find something. Now, are there some social aspects of YouTube? There are, but for the most part, I think you'd probably agree that you and I both go to YouTube when we're searching out something to watch it with the intent of watching it. Versus on Facebook, unless I'm going to Facebook Watch, which is a different story, but unless I'm doing that, if I'm just surfing through the news feed, Facebook's deciding what to show me based upon how it prioritizes, uh, which is factors like what I've engaged with in the past, what I'm interested in, how recent is this post. You'll, you'll understand like with Facebook, most content gets a 24 hour shelf life and then poof, it's old news and they're on to the next thing. So while watch time matters, it matters the most in that first 24 hours because the name of the game is reach. I'm trying to get as many people as possible to see my content, why? Because I put a lot of energy and effort into making quality content as a marketing channel, but if nobody sees it, it has no value. So back to why do we do playlist on Facebook? It is to encourage additional viewership, but it's also to help people who are on your page have a better experience on your page. So on Facebook, I would take more of that first school of thought, which is organize your videos based upon topics. So if you do a video series on market updates, great, it's a playlist. If you do a video series on listings, it's a playlist. On local home tours, it's a playlist. If you interview a loan officer or an attorney once a week, great, it's a playlist. But make it consumable for people who are on your page. Make it something where they can go there and say, I understand what this person talks about. It's not a hodgepodge of randomness, it's organized and well thought through. And honestly, not only will that increase better engagement on your page, but it's gonna really help you is figuring out like, what's my strategy? What do I talk about? What am I posting on a regular basis? It matters for you too. Whew, that was a mouthful. Next one, location tags. Uh, location tags, let's talk about Instagram and then we'll talk about YouTube with location tags. On Instagram, when I post, whether it's a video, an image, or whatever, when I post, I can mark my location. I can be super, I could, I could mark my location as the United States of America, or I could mark my location as uh, 12 South Nashville, or I can mark my location as uh, Tom Ferry headquarters here where I am right now. I can mark my location as I'm at the Marriott. It, it's basically, I do a search and it knows where I'm at because my phone always knows where I'm at when I make the post or my computer and I can tag the location. Now the strategy is where do you want to be found? That's the question. So in other words, if you're at the Marriott, is anybody going to be looking at other posts because they want to know who's at the Marriott? Maybe, but that would be odd. My best guess is it will be your farm. So my recommendation is if you're farming an area and you want to be the dominant agent in a key market area, it could be a metro market area or a specific geo farm, tag that location, own that place. And here's why. Because one, people may click on that location. Like for example, they might be on some restaurant's Instagram page and they might see a location and go, oh, 12 South, and they click it. And then they see all the other posts that are tagged that same location. 
that's where you show up, which means you're relevant to them wanting to see that information, content around that idea. The other way is on Instagram, at the very bottom footer, there's a little magnifying glass. It's called the Explore feed. It's unique from Facebook because Facebook just has their main feed, it's called the News Feed, which is the home button on Instagram. But the magnifying glass on Instagram is called the Explore feed. And what happens there is Instagram has the right to show you a whole bunch of posts that it thinks you want to go see. Now, how do I get my content to show up in the feeds, the Explore feeds of people who don't follow me so that they can follow me and connect with me? One way you do that is location tagging. Location tagging is one of the central ways that Explore feed is determined. There are other ways like hashtags but location feed is the way to do it. So tag your location on Instagram. Be wary of being too broad, too general. That was the same word. Too broad or too narrow. Just make sure it's where you want to be found. Let's talk about location tagging on YouTube. On YouTube, this is a relatively new feature. You can do it on videos when you're posting them. You can do it on videos after the fact. Go back and edit your videos. It's technically done for anybody who's following along right now. You go to your YouTube creator studio. You pull up your videos. And it's in the, uh, I think it's more options or advanced options, and you can add your location. Same principle applies. How will people be searching? What is likely to get me attached to a market area that I want to dominate? But the trick is, the tweak is, tag your location. Number nine, runtime. How long should videos be, for instance? And I'm talking specifically about videos right now. And that really depends. Is it a search network? Is it a social network? Because my intent as a user of those platforms varies based upon which one I'm on. If I am on Facebook, again, there's a kitty cat, there's grandma, there's my best friend graduating, whatever. Awesome, awesome. I'm scrolling through a social network, so I'm just there to be entertained. Hey, Facebook, I tr you're the DJ, Facebook. Show me what's going to make me happy versus on YouTube, I am seeking it out. I am searching for it. So runtime. If I'm seeking something out, like for example on YouTube, I'm seeking something out, likelihood is I've got more attention I'm willing to give to it. I'll watch it for longer. If I'm not seeking it out and I'm just scrolling through a feed, my videos on Facebook, Instagram will do better if they're shorter than say on YouTube with one caveat, which is IGTV, Instagram TV. On Instagram TV, your videos can be up to 10 minutes long. Yay, that's great. Now, when you post on IGTV a video that's longer than 60 seconds, Instagram will do a feed preview where they play the first 60 seconds on that home feed and it shows up on your profile grid, but then anything beyond the 60 seconds, they have to click over to finish it in IGTV. That's great. I love that. But let's talk about Facebook versus YouTube. There was a study that was done last year by BuzzSumo and they analyzed 777 million Facebook posts. And they were trying to determine what is the optimal runtime of a video. And they looked beyond Facebook. There were some studies with YouTube as well. But here's what they found. The sweet spot for engagement, and let me define that term, engagement. Engagement means somebody hearted, liked, laughed. They reacted to my post. They left a comment. They shared it. They interacted in some way with my post. The engagement rate for videos between one and two minutes is 70%. That's the highest, one and two minutes. Now that's more applicable for a social network. After two minutes, it starts to dive, yet they say for three minutes. If you look at the actual research, people's attention tends to wear out after two minutes. So how long should my videos be on Facebook? If you're going to try to optimize it, they should be two minutes, which means maybe if the video is longer, it links out to your website where you've embedded a YouTube video for the full length version. Just think about that. How long are people going to actually watch? And if they stop watching from an algorithmic standpoint, is that somehow hurting me on Facebook? Is Facebook interpreting, oh, people don't like this content, they watched it or they leave? Now, truth is, if they watch it for more than 15 seconds, Facebook calls that a win. They're like, thank goodness this person watched it for at least 15 seconds. That's really the number they're trying to clear, so I don't want to make you panic and think too much about this, but two minutes, one to two minutes, it's a sweet spot. And for my friends who are terrified of being on video, I think I just gave you a saving grace, which says you don't have to be on video for an hour. It's not a webinar. It's just one to two minutes. Can you talk about the market? Can you take me on a tour of a property? And by the way, I want to see your face. Now, on YouTube, it's different. Uh, let's go back to that BuzzSumo study. What they found is videos between six and 13 minutes, it kind of levels off. So imagine if you could this graph where I'm at optimal engagement rate, one to two minutes. Time keeps ticking. Engagement starts to dive, but then it levels off and it holds really true between 6 and 13 minutes. 
Now this video is probably going to get cut up into two different pieces, and I'm willing to bet you each video is going to be right around that 12 to 13 minute mark. I'll eat my words if I'm wrong, because I do talk a lot, and that's not, it's not their fault, it's my fault, if that's the case. But on YouTube, people seek the content out. They went searching for it, and therefore they have a longer shelf life in terms of how long they're willing to watch. So moral of the story. Pay attention to runtime. Which videos are best suited for YouTube because they're longer, shorter, better suited for Facebook? Don't overthink this too much because in a day, I just want you to create video, 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 multicast it across all the platforms. But if you're gonna really go the, in, the extra stretch, these are the rules. Next up is live. Uh, Facebook Live's been around for a long time and it's really resurging in power this year. We know a study from Sprout Social said that live videos had four times the watch rate on Facebook. Live videos, four times the watch rate. Why? Because it's now. It's happening now. It's extra relevant. If I don't watch it now, I won't get to see it when it's really happening. It creates urgency. If you haven't done Facebook Live, if you did it and you stopped doing it, I encourage you to do it again. Uh, Instagram Live's great too, YouTube Live's great, Twitter, all that stuff's great, but the one I'm really looking at right now is Facebook Live. Make sure your video marketing strategy is in some way, shape, or form looking and saying, hey, what's our Facebook Live game plan? Is it I'm out in front of an open house, I'm touring a new listing, what am I doing that is real time and worth reporting, boots on the ground, so that you can give people an inside scoop of what's happening in your world that's relevant to them. Whew, that was a lot of stuff, right? Let's take a break. We're gonna make this a two-part series. We'll finish out next week. Make sure you tune in next week for our final touches, our tweaks in terms of how do I optimize every post on social, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. How do I make sure I'm getting maximum mileage for every post? What I want you to do is to take what you've learned this week, start to apply it so that next week it's a clean slate, you're ready to roll, we can finish the list, and the benefit is I get two weeks of the Tom Ferry Show. How lucky am I? Uh, thanks for tuning in this week. I'll see you next week. This is Jason Pantana, business coach, national speaker with Tom Ferry. Have a great day.